Welcome to the Bronx Journal. I'm your guest host, Marcos Cabrera, sitting in for Professor Miguel Perez. The Latin American and Puerto Rican Studies Department recently celebrated their 40th anniversary. The celebration itself was a sum of the history, the accomplishments, and the many wonderful moments enjoyed by the students who went through the department during the last four decades. To help us recreate that event, today on the program, we have the department chairman, Milagros y Cort, and professors Javier Toti and Licia Fiolmata. Thank, Thank you for having, for having us here. Us. Not a problem. Uh, guys, uh, let's take the audience uh, through the little journey of how we got to this point. How and when was the department established? We have to go back to, to 1968, actually, to the fall of 1968, and to events that are taking place among minority students, mostly African-American and Puerto Rican students, throughout the City University, most, but most specifically at City College, uh, that reverberate, that resonate here at, at Lehman. Um, the students felt, this is part of the civil rights movement and the um, anti-war movement, et cetera. This well, there, the there was a lot going on outside with like, um, a lot of racial... Uh, there, there were a lot of racial conflicts, uh, civil rights movement and it, its impact on Latinos, Puerto Rican Latinos, right. and uh, demanding the same things as African Americans, etc., and the resistance of some groups. And students within the city university felt that um, the demands actually started with the education department, that the teachers that were being trained at city university, city college, Lima, and Brooklyn, etc., we're not being prepared to deal, to understand the realities of the black and Puerto Rican students. By this time, more than half, close to half of the students in the public school system are black or Puerto Rican. Um, so they began to press the education departments for courses that dealt with those realities. African American history, uh, the, what they call the black child in the school system, the Puerto Rican child in the school system that students who are in education will also be, one of the requirements be that they learn Spanish so that they could deal with the large immigrant, my, immigrant population. Uh, these demands are not that well, they were not met by the university system. There's a lot of resistance, uh, education departments, Lehman was an exception actually. Uh, the education departments reject them and say, no, we have a set curriculum, people come here to learn methods about teaching, et cetera. They have to teach to everyone. So if we can continue. Um, so what was going on? Uh, blacks, uh, Puerto Ricans were not getting the education. They were not getting the education. There were very few black and Puerto Rican students at City University. At Lehman College in 1969, 1968-69, the academic year 68-69, 4% of the student body was Puerto Rican and 6% of the student body was African American. So they were a tiny, tiny minority. Um, there were huge problems in the schools. The, the collapse of the public school system had taken place with large rates of attrition of students dropping out, etc. The students who were here, the minority students who were here, felt that they had a mission to uplift their communities, that the university had to look into what was happening in the communities. So in many ways, they felt like they were, I guess, like a vanguard. So that's how the department started? I mean, how did how Well, exactly? it took, that's, it, the department en ended. That process ended in the department. Okay. Um, they begin to organize and to demand the education department to create courses on, on African-American reality, Puerto Rican reality, the child in the school system, et cetera. Um, the education department resist. Meanwhile, when the spring semester opens up, there is a virtual warfare going on at City College with this. Now, there are huge riots uh, between minority students and majority students. The minority students take over the City College campus, even though they were like probably 7% of the population. Together with the sort of like politically, the more radical white students, they take over the campus, rename it Harlem University. Um, the police kicks them out, they retake it. Um, demanding the same things. As they feel the resistance from the education departments, they begin then, following what is happening in California, they begin to demand 
separate academic departments because they realized that only in separate academic departments could faculty be hired to do this on a permanent basis. Okay. At Lehman College, the education department actually, the chair of the education department, Rita O'Leary, who still teaches here as an adjunct, welcomes them and presses the department for, for changes, uh, for this to be incorporated into, into the curriculum. It cost her her job as chair. Wow. She was ousted as chair for those demands. Wow. Was, was Lehman one of the first uh, to... Lehman to was the first department to be approved by the Board of Higher Education. How come? Why? The violence that was taking place at City did not happen here. There were some confrontations. Lehman was a new college. It had separated from Hunter College in 68. Okay. And I think the president, on the one hand, the, the founding president, Leonard Leaf, wanted to avoid the violence because at City College, literally, there were, you know, buildings were being set on fire, et cetera. Um, he wanted to avoid that. He wanted, I guess, to have also make a name for the college. We were, we were the first. We were catering. Right. I think he was also aware that the Bronx was changing. 